Major support for Out to Lunch Acadiana is provided by the law firm of Jones Walker. Established in 1937 with over 375 attorneys in offices throughout the U.S., providing a comprehensive range of services to a local, national, and international client base, joneswalker.com, and by Business First Bank, with locations throughout the state, including Lafayette and Lake Charles, providing personal and commercial banking, treasury management, and wealth solution services to help clients succeed. Business First Bank, banking with greater momentum at b1bank.com. Support also comes from Wyndham Garden Lafayette. From Cafe Vermillionville in Lafayette, we're out to lunch with Professor of Finance and Director of the award-winning Birkin Road Reports, Peter Raschuti. It's business, Acadiana style. Hi, I'm Peter Raschuti. Welcome to Out to Lunch, Acadiana. There's a great deal of uncertainty in the oil business these days. When times are tough and margins are slim, oil producers find ways to trim costs wherever they can. But no matter how big or small your company is, there are only so many people you can lay off. There are only so many wells you can close down. Oil producers still need to produce oil. What they want to do is produce it more efficiently. You'd think because we've been doing this here in Acadiana and around the world for a long time that by now we would have figured out all the cost-cutting methods of getting oil out of the ground. Well, apparently we haven't. My three guests on Out to Lunch today have come up with new oil field innovations. We met these guys through our friends at Innovate Acadiana and the Opportunity Machine, Pete Prados and Zach Barker. Let me introduce you to Josh Suttles. Hello, Josh. Hi, how you doing? I'm so glad you were able to come with us here I'm today. Glad to be here. And uh, our next is uh, Aaron Broussard. Hello, Aaron. Hey, how's it going? And, uh, and Calvin, Calvin Fabre. Calvin, welcome. Thank you. Glad yes. to be here. Normally, I'd, uh, I'd start the show by giving a short introduction of each of y'all's businesses, but today I thought I'd reduce the possibility of displaying my ignorance about the cutting edge of oil field innovation by handing the microphone over to you and giving each of you an, uh, a chance to give us an idea of what the innovations are are and really what they do. So Josh, let me start with you. You're the AIM division manager at, at Nature Corporation, the inventor of a piece of equipment called the flange cuff. I'm going to come back to you and have you tell me exactly what an AIM division manager does, but first tell us a little bit about the flange cuff. Well, well the flange cuff uh, was a tool that we designed uh, in order to assist our clients in hot bolting techniques. Um, on certain size flanges, you're, a, you're able to hot bolt and still maintain production, but there's some other type of flanges that, in order to safely exchange these bolts out, you have to shut down production. Which is very expensive. Right? Very expensive. You're talking about loss of production, loss of time and hours spent. So our tool uh, encompasses a flange with, through engineered torque settings and, and um, stress analysis, encompasses a flange, and we torque that up, and it grabs the pressure from the inside of the pipe grabs that pressure, holds it together, and we're able to exchange your studs without the loss of production. So well, that's, that's the cuff in a nutshell. That's such a great idea. Why, did, why, was, why didn't a big company like Exxon or Halliburton come up with it? Why do we seem to find the ideas in the, in the smaller companies? Well, th there are some other tools out there that kind of generally do the same thing that we, we've, we've done. But what we did is we developed a better, faster, and safer technique of doing so. That's what people want. <laughs> that makes sense. The, now, Aaron, you're part of a Lafayette institution, uh, Begno Manufacturing. We had Don uh, Begno on the Out to Lunch show, so we know a little bit about the metal factory and the machine shop, but you've developed a product called Power Brush Machines. Tell us about that. Yeah, so Power Brush Machines is a pneumatic thread cleaning device used in the oil and gas industry. Basically what it does is it just cleans threads of all the different sides, casings, uh, tubing, drill pipe. So it's, it's big deal is that uh, it's environmentally friendly because everything's self-contained, so nothing goes on the ground. Um, and it's also a lot faster. So generally our guys were uh, doing 15, 16 joints of tube a day. Now we're up to probably about 300 with our system. So this is a pipe that's been used and, take, and has been taken back out? Sure, so it was part of a drill string, went down hole and then came back up and now they have to clean the threads for inspection. And then at that stage, that pipe can be re-rented or? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. That's the name of the game for the, the rental companies is to get it uh, out of the hole, back to the yard, and back out again as quickly as possible. So we've been able to help them 
make that happen more efficiently. I can see why you'd be popular with that gang. There's that. Now, Calvin, you have a, an interesting background, a combination of software development and marketing. You're known as a technical debt specialist, uh, which is working on time, money, and effort spent in the future to pay off poor design decisions of the past. You've developed an app called Spotter. It's gotten a lot of attention. Tell us about Spotter and its, its application in the oil field. Sure, Spotter is an iPad and Android tablet application. All right, same way I would buy a tablet? Yep, okay. just like that. But it's an app that helps you remove pen and paper from the field. People are inspecting things all the time. They're taking pictures, they're writing, uh, they're making mistakes. And it, this lets you take a disconnected iPad into a plant, a refinery out in the oil field because it's intrinsically safe with a, a really cool explosion proof case. And it lets you collect everything that you normally would do with a pen and paper on a form. But it, it, it brings it in disconnected so you don't have to be connected to the internet onto your iPad and then when you get connected, it sends all the data back to a little central hub where you can massage and analyze all the data that Because the collected. real problems in, in a lot of business is when you do have things with pen and paper, things get mistranslated and, and there's exactly. delays. This, this has got to be a real help. That's right. The, the pharmacist is not the only one that has to decipher bad handwriting <laughs> from doctors. <laughs> so. Now Josh, one of the things that surprises me is even during a downturn in this business in oil and gas, they conti people continue to innovate. When people like us uh, decide to innovate, that's how we really set ourselves apart from our co competition. Come up with a, a safer way to do it do these things, um, more efficient, that way we, in the end game, we save our clients more money. If we're able to do that, that is our self-marketing tool right there. That's what's, that's what's going to set ourselves apart from the guys that just stay stagnant. It doesn't matter if you're in, in a, an upward type of economy or a downward slope. If you're able to do these things that are safer and more efficient and save more money, then that's, that's how we rise above everybody else. Let me ask all of you, in the, in the oil field, are companies quick to adapt or slow to adapt to new technology? Uh, for us, I, could, I, can, I can speak on the flange cuff, it's, it's been a process. So anytime that we try to introduce a new, new tool to where we say we can encompass this massive amounts of pressure, and, but you have to take our word on it. Uh, there's not too many people out there that's willing to do so, so you have to go through this very large vetting process, and this is not a vetting process that takes one to two weeks. To, I mean, we've been working with some of our clients for the past six months just to get an opportunity to show and do live demonstrations. So um, anytime you come up with new technology, there is a, a very large vetting process that has to take place. Just so you might be actually work. sort of giving the product away in the very beginning just to get, get it out there. Yeah, you got, you got, to, you got to prove yourself. You've got to prove yeah. that your product works. Especially, especially when there's safety involved. I, I also identify with that. There's a cultural change that has to be made within the company to, uh, to embrace change and possible risk um, with new innovations. You know, people are, are risk averse right now. So embracing new technologies is, uh, it's, it's a hard sale sometimes. But really the technologies that, that all three of us are creating are good whether the economy is on the upswing or the downswing because we're saving money either way. And uh, you have actually, in your career, have done a lot connecting with universities and I guess you're doing some things with UL here, right? Yeah, that's right. Um, in addition to being accepted to the opportunity machine here in uh, Lafayette, uh, we go into the computer science departments at Southeastern in Hammond, LSU in Baton Rouge, and now at um, UL here in Lafayette. And we try to influence the curriculum because Louisiana produces the most innovative graduates. Culturally, their, their work ethic is, is unmatched with any kind of outsourcing that we've ever seen. And you've even gone across the state line to Texas. I have. Yes. So uh, I apologize for that. <laughs> <laughs> those, those charges were dropped. <laughs> <laughs> so I did come back, and that, uh, what I'd like to do is have more graduates stay here. But when they get graduated from the college, that they don't have to look elsewhere, that they are craftsmen within computer science, and they can get jobs here and be innovators here. People want to stay in this region. I mean, it, it takes a lot, uh, somebody has to offer a lot of money to get you to leave this place. And, uh, that's right, unless you're from out of state already. Then, yeah, oh, that's true. Then we have a high turnover rate in a lot of the engineering fields. We have a high defection rate. A lot of engineers that are hired from outside of the state come here, they don't really fit in with the whole culture, and they end up leaving within the first year. Sometimes 80% of, of uh, 
uh, people externally coming in leave. Within so the we first need year. engineers that play an instrument. That would be, you know, then they would yeah. fit right in. That's going <laughs> to stay here. Gonna, that's right. <laughs> or like to eat, right? I mean, yeah, well, absolutely. Right. That can be a draw in itself. <laughs> <laughs> now, Aaron, um, is there an R&D division? I know you're a small shop, but um, is there certain people that are working on that, or is everybody coming up with ideas? I mean, we, ha we have an owner that is, is so ridiculously innovative. This is Don? Yeah, Don yes. Begno. He, I mean, he's been doing it for for almost 40 years now. So he's he's probably the leader of that innovative uh, R&D department. But we have a lot of guys that come in and out. Right now we have some interns, uh, some guys that just graduated from UL and iTech, and that's one of their their desires and projects. They're actually helping in the R&D as well. Well, you know, what was We have a whole wall, just to, just to show you Don is the, the innovator that he is. We have a whole wall of stuff. It's called uh, Ideas Waiting for Challenges, right? So there's no need for it today, but you never know what they'll be tomorrow. Now, the other thing that kind of uh, gets me about this is that um, we always ha talk about this mismatch between the graduates and what's really needed out there. I, I suppose you working with the universities helps to bridge this, I guess. Yeah, that's true. Um, a lot of the universities in Louisiana, they are graduating entrepreneurs, though. A lot of people want to be creative and, that's and the cool nurture. Thing to be. It is, and nurturing that right side of the brain. A lot of times we're focused too much on ACT scores and grades, but all of those tests are engineering uh, whittled down to a single answer. They're left brain only, and we, the creative class, the creative people, and the that are the people that are going to drive this conceptual age are those that are very right brained. And what did they say? The world is run by B and C students too. So uh, that's right. Um, in fact, um, if you look at Virgin Atlantic, and you look at uh, like Branson and, and Branson, yeah. yes, and Cochrane and and uh, H and R Block, all those guys are dyslexic, but but wow. yet they create these enterprises that are so entrepreneurial and so creative, because their right side of the brain is overcoming the deficiencies on the left side. Let me ask you a question. I always like to talk to you guys, uh, guys about is that um, you don't work for giant corporations. Um, you've made this decision. What's the difference and, and why did you make the choice? I would much prefer working for a, a locally owned, smaller smaller type of business. Um, there's just a little bit more freedoms involved in that. Um, but the security of wor working with large corporations and the fi financial backing uh, is really a stress reliever. Yeah, yeah, that would have been. Now, you, yeah. now you're, you've got Don and, uh, and you're kind of on your own, right? Right, right, but it sounds like both of you guys have an entrepreneur sort oh, of position that's where you're inside term. of a company. Yeah, that's a really great, um, that's, the, that's the best of both worlds. You have the security, but then you have the freedom and liberty to innovate within your, your company. I think that, that's for me exactly it, especially in the downtime. I'm wearing so many different hats. You don't go to work and do the same thing every day. You don't go to work and even know what you're going to do some days, you know. Uh, there's so many different things that, to get involved in. And the team that, that we work with, for me, and I, I know I've met some of uh, you guys' this team as well, is great people, and you, you get to know them on a way more personal level versus this co corporate structure and things like that. So for me, it's been, it's been amazing from that side. Well, you know, you three, we actually know you all from the same place uh, in terms of all these competitions and such. What do you think of Lafayette as a, as a oh, kind of a, a bed for creating the, these kind of companies? You, you're comfortable with how it's going? It seems to be really growing. A absolutely. As mentioned earlier, I mean, uh, the amount of creative and innovative people that are that are here is is uh, ridiculous. If you'd see even within within our our company and with the guys that we work for uh, the university side, it's it's amazing. Creativity, innovation. I think it's a hotbed for it for sure. For, and, and particularly considering Lafayette's size, right? I mean, uh, this is uh, well. One of the things I believe in is that you have boots on the ground. You got guys that have been working in the industry for a very very long time, um, have come to know some of the issues and some of the problems with our related industry and uh, have been taking it upon themselves to find solutions to those issues. So I think, I think that's why maybe Lafayette is so successful in, in the, 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 uh, the, the uh, innovative side of things, right. right? Is because you have those boots on the ground, you, you got the guys to identify, and then you also have the, so to speak, the genius to, to figure that solution out. Don't forget about your blazingly fast internet. That's that right. Had we had, had those folks on. Yep. That, I think that stimulates it as well. For that's sure. a that is a big advantage. Uh, now it's the time that we'd like to do uh, part of the show called the checklist, where we take a little break and ask you a quick question that you probably wouldn't find on the loan application. I'll, I'm going to start with Calvin. 
Uh, Calvin, what advice would you give to a new employee working in the mailroom? I guess this is kind mm. of the, the bottom of the organization. That's a good question. The first thing I'd say is don't open my mail. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just deliver it. Um, but uh, don't get caught up in that position. You know, always look for where a solution uh, needs to be placed. Always find a problem that, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about solving problems, making people's lives better through our own innovations. Don't, real, don't, uh, don't get hamstrung by your ACT score right. or, or your grades in school. Be innovative and get passionate about something and exercise and, and get that passion out through innovation. You're not going to be that male guy forever. That's right. That's you will not be. <laughs> and Josh, what is your favorite gadget? You're kind of a techie guy, so I'll ask you. Let's yeah, so I would have to say my wife. Oh, wow. <laughs> that is not one of the answers I had and, circled up here. And, Check, and, please. And she's, <laughs> Check and, please. And she's over there listening, so <laughs> it's, it's actually amazing, right? So all you got to do is give the kiss every now and then, and it does exactly what you want it to do. Really? Yeah, that's right. That is I'm not sure this is actually going to not be edited <laughs> out, but I think that's an actual, uh, <laughs> wow. All right, I was looking for a smartphone, but there's a, there's a, well, thank you, Josh, and I look forward to you getting your own apartment. This is something. <laughs> <on me. laughs> All right, Aaron, what's your strategy for coping when things go wrong? And I guess they do go wrong. You know, occasionally it happens. For me, the fir first thing, always most important, is to breathe. After you breathe, it's, you have to push through it. So you assemble the best team you can, internal to the company, external to the company, and you just push through it together. Get really creative. That's all you can do, right? We're talking about innovation. Uh, our company motto is innovation through common sense. So you go back to that core level of common sense and try and, try and go from there. And what that, that breath, what does that bring to you? Uh, you know, we, we, we started studying um, this whole mind-body empowerment, embodiment stuff, and, and that's one of the things that they taught us was to center. Find your center and your core and your strongest from there. So I guess it's kind of our... I didn't think we'd get this kind of kumbaya <laughs> part in these Some soft engineering. Skills. Soft, soft skills, skills. Hey. that's right. Here. Which part of the brain is that now? Uh, that's a lot of right, right brain. <laughs> right there. brain, great. Yeah. This is so... Creativity, empathy. I think that's why yes. lunch is going so well is that you both part both halves of your brain. Sometimes people only you know come with half a head or something. And this is this is terrific. They <laughs> Josh, earlier we uh, I was talking to you and you said that you're the uh, AIM division manager. What does that mean? Well, AIM stands for Access Integrity and Maintenance. Okay. Um, so not archery. No, okay. not archery. Uh, it's it's a very very wide acronym. So basically, the division that I'm responsible for is a multi-discipline, multi-service type trade skill set provider for the oil field. So what we do, what we specialize in is putting together these multi-discipline, multi-craft crews, right? Lower the POB, uh, POB space on these facilities and, and try to shorten, shorten jobs and try to get more things accomplished in less time, less money. Now, who would you be hired by? Would you be hired by the EMP company or a service company? Or? Uh, we do, it's very, very broad. We, we do a lot of work uh, in the Gulf of Mexico, so we do a lot of the EMP stuff. Um, but we also tag along with some of the other service companies to assist them in things that they don't specialize in. So we, we, partnership, we partnership with a lot of different people. Um, and, the, and the great thing about it is, is that we ha also have other cost-effective um, methods of doing this work. So a lot of our guys that we have in the AIM division are rope access certified. And rope access is, to put it in a nutshell, it's a, uh, a method of going somewhere that will eliminate scaffold, and man lifts, that kind of thing, by using mountaineering techniques. So these guys will actually go up and they'll do the, the inspections, the painting and blasting, and, and uh, other skill sets. Climbing up these things? By, by ropes. Wow. That's right. So that kid that always liked to climb, we now have a job for him. Yes, they have a, they have a job. They wow. Just call me. <laughs> just call you. They, uh, and Aaron, who are your clients? Is it the rental tool company or the, the pipe company? So we do pipe, pipe inspection companies, rental tool companies. Um, yeah, pipe inspection companies are a big, big customer of ours. Uh, pipe yards also and the rental companies themselves, yep. So in the inspection, that's beyond the, the power brush side. This is No, absolutely not. Power brush is very necessary in the inspection process. So what happens is... is there's all this piped open junk on the, the threads. They have to clean those threads to be able to tell if it's still going to be good and usable. And how yeah. many, go if, ahead. I, if you don't mind, if I can add to that, we do a lot of these pipe inspections that he, he talks about. And the great deal about his product is that it used to take days for us to clean 
the threads on these pipe connections to do the, our inspections. If we would have had that 10 years ago, I mean, that's that part of the business where we could have set ourselves aside from our competitor because there was no one else to have that 10 years ago. So it's actually a great, great tool. Hey, let me ask you something. When I've been a judge on some of these entrepreneurial contests and such, uh, um, it's oftentimes, you guys obviously all won, uh, you not only had great products, but it's the delivery and being able to explain your passion for the product and all. How, what did you guys do to get ready to, to be in these contests and to do so well? Did you like I, I had coworkers just give me a hard time for about two weeks before. We also, I think we all attended. <laughs> that kind of devil's some, advocate kind yeah, of they, guy. Yeah, yeah. They, they, they made uh, it all measurable until it was ingrained in my head, I think. Uh, but we also, they had uh, a guy named Joel Dawson, really, really good guy. He was a yeah. Toastmaster Award winner. Sure. He, he kind of went through the process with it as well. But for me, I mean, I, I probably ran that pitch before we, we did it probably a hundred times at least. Wow. Even got my mom involved at one point. So oh, really? It pulling out all <laughs> the stops. Calvin, well, what did you... Uh, it's all about rehearsing. Um, rehearsing the timing. You know, what are the main points? What is the main pain that we're addressing? And, uh, and getting those, those, uh, those benefits out. And not they only just give you how much time, Calvin? Uh, just three, a, three, just minutes. A, yeah, three, three minutes. minutes. Three, three minutes. minutes. And there's, wow. a, there's a... Just like we're at a political debate. There's the... The green light, the yellow light, and the red light. And you better stop. They're <laughs> going to interrupt they, you. They threaten to kill the, the PowerPoint and the lights, I think, if we went over. Oh, yeah. The <laughs> trap door. They, uh, now, uh, Calvin, you've got, uh, tell us again what technical debt specialist is. I mean, I get the I idea that you're fixing things that weren't done right the first time and exactly. saving money. But what's, what's it about? And why yeah, is it called that? In the software world, technical debt is the time and money that you are going to spend in the future because of a bad design decision decision of the past if your boss our bosses have all come to us and said get this done i don't care what it takes i need it done by monday cut whatever corners you want put whatever shoddy work you want in there but just get it done the one thing he never does is come back and say, remember the time I told you to get it done really fast well now we've got all the money and time to go back and do it right you don't do that right. and so what you end up doing is the technical debt, the interest payments, if you will, are the bugs that you're fixing or the leaks that you're fixing or the, the things that should have been done the right the first time that you keep going back and fixing. So now you, you can't work on newer things because you're too busy fixing the debt of the past. <laughs> now, when you go in and do that, is it fixed for good? Yes. A lot of times we have to say, well, this is either a rewrite or we're going to need to spend a lot of time reworking this. And a lot of times companies will out, get outsourced uh, programming from overseas. Um, the programmer that they used never wins the lottery or gets hit by the truck. He just moves <laughs> to California. <laughs> so a lot of times we're fixing some code or some programming that was left over. Um, so we try to do it right. And we'll, we'll tell you it's going to be expensive because you're paying down this debt. So. <laughs> and you've got the... Uh, You've got this background, but what made you um, decide to use it in in this in this genre, the whole in the oil field? Why uh, you could you could do a lot of different things. Well, I grew up in um, when when I got out of college, I went to Houston and I went uh, worked for a large uh, offshore drilling company, and this is before the internet, so they would put me on the oil rigs for two weeks at a time, training the users of the software that our company wrote, and I really got to understand how people use software and how software can change people's lives because they're using this 8 and 10, 12 hours a day. And when I was stuck out on an oil rig for two weeks at a time, I was truly offshoring <laughs> programming <laughs> yeah. out there. But I learned how to tweak and understand and see things that a corporate environment didn't understand because I was there with the materialsmen checking things in and out of the, of the materials office and watching maintenance operations go. So I, I have a passion for the, the oil field in that sense. And uh, there's, there's no geek squad that, that comes out by boat or anything like that here. No, I don't, I, don't, I don't believe there is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they have a colored helmet for that. <laughs> With the benefit of hindsight, it's ironic that innovation is partly to blame for the gyrations in the oil market. Uh, from deep water drilling to fracking, we, we keep finding more ways and adding to the supply while, for now anyway, demand is, is taking a while to catch up. Perhaps equally ironically, uh, other than a spike in demand, the only ways out of the current situation is more innovation. Uh, Josh, Aaron, Kelvin, it's exciting to learn that the innovations you're working on can contribute to the health of the national and global economy 
are, and they're being born right here in Louisiana. Um, Y'all are on the cutting edge of oil field innovation. It's been great to meet you and learn more about what you're up to. Thank you all, Josh Suttles, Aaron Broussard, and Calvin Fabre for joining me today and Out to Lunch. Glad to be here. Thanks. Thank you. I'm Thank more you. encouraged. Uh, this, uh, my guests on Out to Lunch today have been Josh Suttles, the, the AIM division manager at the Nature Corporation and creators of the Flange Cuff, Aaron Broussard, the chief operating officer at Begno Corporation, creators of the Power Brush Machine, and Calvin Fabre, technical debt specialist, founder, and president of Invoke creators of the Spotter app. You can find out more about Josh, Aaron, and Calvin's oil field innovations by following the links on our websites, krvs.org and itsacadiana.com. Today's show is recorded live over lunch at Cafe Vermilionville in Lafayette. Cafe V is open six days a week for lunch and dinner in a courtyard that sets the scene for fine Louisiana cuisine. The producer of our show is Grant Morris. Our technical producer is Eric Merle. Our researcher is Dominic Lloyd. Our theme song, Encore Monsieur Nice Guy, is written by Mitch Foreman and performed by Mitch Foreman and Andre Michaud. Special thanks today for helping put this show together is the Acadiana Business Consultants, Pete Prados from Innovate Acadiana and Zach Barker from the Opportunity Machine and Dr. Blake Escudé. If you want to know what we all look like, you can find photos from this show on our website and Facebook page. These photos were taken today by Gwen Oquin. You can get this show as a podcast. You can listen to past shows. You can keep up with us on all kinds of social media by going to our website, thisacadiana.com and krvs.org. Support for Out to Lunch Acadiana comes from Wyndham Garden Lafayette, located off Pinhook near Calise Saloon. Wyndham Garden Lafayette offers a complimentary airport shuttle within a three-mile radius reaching downtown shopping and local restaurants. Out to Lunch is a production of INO Broadcasting for itsacadiana.com and KRVS 88.7 FM. I'm Peter Raschuti. Thanks for joining me. I look forward to meeting you again next week around the table here at Cafe Vermilionville for more business, Acadiana style, on Out to Lunch. Major support for Out to Lunch Acadiana is provided by the law firm of Jones Walker. Established in 1937 with over 375 attorneys in offices throughout the U.S. Providing a comprehensive range of services to a local, national, and international client base. JonesWalker.com And by Business First Bank with locations throughout the state including Lafayette and Lake Charles. Providing personal and commercial banking, treasury management, and wealth solution services to help clients succeed. Business First Bank, banking with greater momentum at b1bank.com. Support also comes from Wyndham Gordon Lafayette.